Caucus. Uh, Lance, how you doing? I'm doing great, Moon. How about yourself? Good. Good to hear from you. Happy New Year, man. Well, same to you. It's uh, I'm I'm glad the cold weather's gone. I was getting tired of that. I, I got to tell you, I like cold weather. I don't like ridiculous weather. What we just went through was ridiculous weather. That was man, that was bad. I'm telling you, that was bad. I don't I want. Uh, I don't, they can have all they want. They can have all that global warming they want up north. <laughs> exactly. All right, Lance. Okay. Uh, it's already started. Uh, everybody keeps talking about the budget solution. It's amazing. You on this program before the first of the year after the tax cut. Uh, that Donald Trump and them uh, passed and the Republicans passed, and you made a comment that this could be 250 to 300 million more dollars per year because if taxes change, then the state's going to benefit from it almost. It might be more than that, but let's just say 300 million dollars. But that ought to knock a whole lot of a billion dollar budget overnight. Yeah, it, it should. It should. I think, uh, I think everybody, including, uh, the governor realizes that uh, there will be uh, some money coming back to the state when the the uh, federal tax changes are implemented in, in full. So I think that's some good news for us. And, and where the legislature uh, has to really be considerate is we don't want to do something that is going to just put, you know, tax the heck out of people when they're getting this tax break and then put too much money back into the Louisiana uh, budget so that we can spend more. It's just something that we have to be cognizant about, and we have to take measures to be uh, frugal with the state's, uh, state takes taxpayers' money. Yeah, you know, the governor uh, called last week for the Public Service Commission to get the utility companies, which are corporations who are going to get a major corporate tax break, go from 35 to 21 uh, percent. They're, they're now calling. He sent it out to the Public Service Commission asking these utility companies to cut Give the break that they're getting to the taxpayers. Well, I'm calling the governor who are y'all already. They've already recognized about 300 million in extra money. This could be another 300 million in extra money to give our money back because it's coming from the taxpayers. I mean, I, I, am I wrong by saying that? I mean, he's calling for that. I'm not disagreeing with it. But if that's the case, then I'm calling for the governor to give us back some of our money on the extra money they have. Absolutely not. You're not wrong on that. I believe that, that we do need to take that into consideration. Listen, we're a free enterprise system. The more, and I've said this a hundred times on your show, the more that government takes money out of your pocket and they extract that money from your pocket, the less that the private economy is going to be able to operate on. And it's the less uh, of your freedoms. I mean, that, that uh, takes your choices. What I'd like to see for us to get, give those cuts back to the uh, citizens of Louisiana, let them make the choices they want to make, how to spend their money, and watch the economy grow. It's very simple. You're seeing that happen all over the country right now. Just in, since uh, the Trump plan has been implemented, these companies are spending money. They're coming back to the United States. They're building their plants. That's what happens in a free enterprise system, mm -hmm. and it only makes sense for us to do that in Louisiana. We've been operating under a system for 90 years that has has too large of a government, and that's why we have the problems we have in the state of Louisiana, in my opinion. Uh, no doubt about it. Lance Harris, uh, Representative Lance Harris, my special guest, one of the Republican leaders uh, in the House. By the way, I also, I think it's kind of odd they're already beating y'all up. I, I, <laughs> I keep reading these articles and this, these House Republicans, these House Republicans, these House Republicans. Had they let me and, and Lance, you got to you got to think on your feet a little bit on this one. Uh, if y'all had gone with the budget y'all wanted to last year, which is basically a standstill budget with some increases and some mandatory stuff. Where would we be right now looking that we had a surplus looking at the, what the federal government has done? Do you think we would be really close to having this thing already fixed, even with the governor not changing one thing in state government, which is a spending problem, as you know? Uh, look, we absolutely would be much better off. I, I don't know the exact figures, but I know we, we had uh, done the calculation before REC recognized more revenue. We, we thought we would be around $700 million uh, deficit instead of a $1.07 billion. And the other thing you have to remember what happened in that budget last year is, uh, and we didn't have it in ours, there were state pay raises in that for civil service. There were some other things that now you're going to have to fund as they grow year after year after year. That's part of the governor's continuation budget of $428 million that he wants. So, 
you know, had we gone with that standstill budget, we would have reduced the, the appropriation by approximately $200 million. We wouldn't have done all these raises in a time we can't afford them. And we'd be much better off and it'd be much more manageable now as we're going into this year. Unfortunately, we lost by one vote on the floor, uh, and we got the budget we got, and, and we're dealing with it. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, I'm just saying, now, let's talk about the sales tax. Uh, I'm just going to look at this thing in a realistic way. If you're right, and by the way, the papers are saying I just could save $300 million for the state of Louisiana. We could we can increase our budget $300 million by the Trump tax cut. Well, if it's a billion-dollar budget, and by the way, that's every year, uh, that brings it to seven hundred million. A half cent sales tax brings in about five or six hundred million dollars. That, you, that if, if, about, if, yeah. if it lowered it from a penny to a half, you you, you you're there. You, I mean, you're there already. Uh, and we're doing the math on that. Uh, uh, we're looking at every angle as we come up to uh, uh, the you know if we're going to have a special or not. But yes, you're absolutely right. And. Uh, you may be able to uh, even have more of an impact. Just think, that $300 million coming back to Louisiana, these, these tax uh, breaks that the federal government is doing, I'm, I'm going to certainly feel it in my business. I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I've got some property I'm going to develop because of it. Mm-hmm. And when, that kind of th- when those kind of things start happening, the economy is going to pick up in the state of Louisiana, which is where we need to see it pick up. It's got to be private sector. It will pay and that you'll get your taxes and you'll reap some benefits off of that. And it, and it goes a long way to curing this revenue problem, so-called revenue problem that the state of Louisiana has. Well, and, with, and with, so with all think, prices. Remember that half a cent is worth about $410 million, I believe, last time I looked at it, because the one penny is 820 Okay. Or 840 So uh, it, it goes a long ways to fix it. Well, and you're also looking right now at the price of all the y'all based the budget on fifty three, I think. I might be wrong on the number. Fifty one fifty one or fifty three. What was it? Do you remember? I think it's fifty one dollars and seventy five cents. Okay, right. and and right now we're at sixty bucks, so that's gonna be a little bit of a windfall for the state as well. That's right. Uh, we have to take that into account, absolutely, when we're looking at this. Well no question. I, the the big question too is I notice on y'all being criticized, y'all being ripped, the same people, Jim Beam, anybody at the Advocate, anybody at the Times-Picayune, anybody at the Gannett newspaper, they're criticizing House Republicans. But nobody ever says, you know, Bell Edwards needs to come up with his cuts, too. Bell Edwards needs to come up with how he, he's changing government, because I don't see him changing one thing. It's about begging for more money. Right. And, and, and look, it really does... Uh I'm not going to say it gets old, but it kind of baffles me sometimes. We have principles. I mean, we have those things as conservatives that, you know, we just disagree with the philosophy that's being espoused by the administration. That is a bigger government taking more money out of your pocket, and we believe in a smaller government and trying to reduce your taxes or keep them the same. And the press says we're obstructionists just for holding to our position and wanting to have a good, solid debate about those two philosophies. It does baffle me a little bit that that happens. But I'm telling you, and and you can look at the data, probably 65 to 70 percent of the state of Louisiana believes that government is too big and that we're overtaxed. So we're actually taking the position of the majority of the citizens in the state of Louisiana. Uh, it's, it, it really is something how the press handles all of this. And look, the governor does need to come out, uh, with a little more detail on the things that he released last week. Uh, who is he going to compress the, the personal taxes on? What is it going to, you know, is it going to be middle class, higher class? Who? He just says in his plan, we're going to compress, uh, you know, personal income tax rates or, or, or brackets. Well, that's a whole, that could be a whole range of things. Who's he going to expand the tax base on on the, on the uh, services? We need to know those exact particulars, and we also need to know uh, what his philosophy is on the growth of government. Yeah, exactly. by, the, by the way, we have by, to know what his priorities are. By the way, he's got a, He's authorized to give you a budget. You're not authorized to give him a budget. He's authorized That's to give true. you a budget. I noticed in the paper where well, he's asked for the Republicans in the House to give a budget. That's not your job. It's his job. It's his job to give uh, you a budget. 
I absolutely agree that it's his job to come up with a plan because the Constitution says the governor is the CEO of the state. But if you re- hold up, Lance, if you read the press, Jim Beam and the Advocate and the Gannett newspapers and the Times Union, they acting like it's y'all's job to come up with it. Oh, I, I get that. That's all uh, something that uh, to me is political because when we uh, would don't come up with something, they uh, when we come up with something they don't like it, or even if we don't come up with something, they're going to bash but it. But y'all, Lance, Lance, y'all came up with something last year. It was a great plan, and they 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 shot it down. They totally shot absolutely. it down. Uh, that is absolutely correct. So uh, I agree with you. It's, it's it's his job as CEO of the state to come up with something. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Representative Lance Harris, we'll do it one more segment when we get back. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. Hickson has it com. Check them out. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. Lance Harris, Representative Lance Harris, my special guest. And, of course, they're getting ready to deal with all the budget stuff again because it never ends. Uh, Lance, Lance, you used some numbers last time. From 2016 July 1st to 2018 July 1st, our budget is going to show about a $5.1 billion increase in spending. And we know uh, we know we raised somewhere, depending on who you talk to, you may have your own number, between two billion and two point eight billion in new taxes, and if you notice, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. If you have a spending problem, you can, your revenue side can be whatever you want to. You still gonna have a spending problem somewhere up the road. But we nobody is dealing with the spending side of this equation. I don't see who's dealing with it. Bill Edwards is not dealing with it. Uh, just your thoughts on that, because that is a lot. Five point five billion dollars. Of more money to spend. I don't know about it in you, in your book, but in my book, that is a gigantic increase in spending and revenue. Absolutely. And look, what they say is, well, that's a lot of that's federal match dollars, which it is. But look, I'll give you the figures. When you're talking about total appropriation at the end of the year, 2015-16 budget was 27 million 153. The 2016-17 uh, was 30. Uh, excuse me, 27 billion point one. Thirty point eight billion that on twenty sixteen seventeen twenty seventeen eighteen went to thirty two point six billion. That's about a five point two billion dollar increase. Look, and people say, well, well, government's not growing. Are you kidding me? It went up fourteen percent in sixteen seventeen and went up six percent uh, in the year that we're in now. So we just cannot do that. I don't care if it is federal match. You, that listen to the second phrase of that or second word in that phrase, federal match. Yeah. In order to match that, you got to spend state general fund dollars. Yeah. yeah. And b- by the way, by and the way, and, and, to, and look to our friends at the universities. They want to know where their money's at. I, I, you got to start with Medicaid. And everybody says Medicaid expansion is great. It is costing us uh, arm, a leg, and two feet. And, and I think it will continue to do so. There's got to be some some uh, reforms put in. Uh, copay at the emergency rooms it needs to be looked at. I think that there needs to be work requirements, which we will we will be coming uh, with some bills this year on that. Uh, those reforms have to be put in place. Look, Maine just put in work requirements on food stamps last year. All right, so, and and they're doing it on Medicaid, some other things. They dropped their case load by almost ninety percent, or excuse me, sixty percent. Well, that, that, that mean that mean people didn't want to go to work, so they said the heck with the money. Am I am I reading that well, right? Well, no. They that, what happened was because they did it, it, it they they uh, had some programs in place. People were going into the private sector and getting jobs and getting picked up on private insurance and some other things, and they they were getting jobs actually. Um, not being caught up in the in the continual cycle sure. of the poverty that sure. the government puts you on. So I think there's some things that we'll be addressing. Look, we've got to address some of these tax exemptions too. Uh, when we're looking, when the governor drops his budget on the 19th of G- January, he's not going to be able to say, "I want to cut movie tax credits by X." That comes right off the top. Sure. But this ought to just infuriate the public. We've already certified probably over $112 million worth of movie tax credits in this year. 
But why am I, as a taxpayer, giving Walmart $398,000 to make a TV commercial? Yeah. Why am I giving Popeyes Let me Let me throw some. Lance, and I agree with all that, but let me throw one real quick thing. What scares me is that if we start taxing things we hadn't taxed before. Now, I know you may be going to hold up the moon. We taxed on enough items. When I see any government start breaching out and grabbing even more items to tax, it always concerns me. And I, I remember cable vision and ad sales and all that stuff. If you start taxing that, I don't think you know how much money is really going to come in, number one. And number two is it means that it will increase the amount of money going to the coffers. What, just your thoughts well, on that. I, that concerns me to start taxing things we've never taxed before. Well, look, it concerns me. And that's why we have said and we've been very consistent with our message. We have to look at spending first. Yeah, we have point. to look at spending reform first. And once we find those things in spending reform, if we do everything we can to spending reform and and it's still, you know, we've got some some uh, uh, absolute critical government services we have to fund, then maybe we'll look at that expansion. But I'm with you on that, Moon. That money's coming out of somebody's pocket. But when we look at these silly credits like the, the movie credit, we yeah. use 82 cents for every dollar we spend. Yeah. Well, then, I, I then understand we're that. Do away with tops, you know. I mean, it's un- unbelievable to me. Yeah, Lance Harris, we'll hear from you a lot coming up, uh, and God bless, and we do appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Moon. Appreciate it. Enjoy your Monday. All right, Representative Lance Harris. All right, we'll get back more to comment. Your calls all welcome. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. It is the Hicks and Hazard Hotline. By the way, in Lake Charles Wednesday at Doctor Snow's office. We'll take a break. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graphone Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Like to be part of the program. Lance Harris. Folks, we're going to try to give these guys that really are trying to do what's right in the state of Louisiana as much airtime as we can. You know, I played Alan Seaball the other day. Me and Alan don't see eye to eye on everything, but, but I think his heart's right on what he's trying to do in the state government. And we played a seven minute deal with uh, Robin and Aaron and, and Kill Radio. And we did that because, I mean, Alan was on the money. And they're, they're the guy. Every time you see uh, Jim Bean and uh, the Advocate and the Gannett newspaper and the NOLA, Thomas Picayune, and Stephanie Grace and Lanny Keller, these, these, all these deputy press secretaries that Bill Edwards has, just like the press in Washington supported Obama, they support Bill Edwards. They're never going to do anything to go against Bill Edwards. And they're going to continue to pound the House members. Being a nice guy, I think the House members ought to have a say because they're not listening to them. This this budget problem would already be solved if they would listen to them. It's amazing. By Constitution, by the Constitution, understand, Bell Edwards, the governor, the one-term governor, the one-term governor, Bell Edwards, is his responsibility to turn a budget in. And if he wants to turn a budget in that's bad, then let him turn one in that's bad. That's his choice. But he has to give the budget, not the House. Well, I want to see what the House got. Where's their budget? Well, turn your budget in and let's see what happens. You know, that's that's what amazes me about the whole process is we need to wait and see what Bell Edwards says the budget is. We know he's going to get $300 million more because of the tax cut by Trump and the lower in the rates. People won't be able to write off as much. That means the state will have more money. It's that simple. You're lowering the rates. You're not going to be paying at a higher rate. You're going to be paying at a lower rate. And the state will benefit from that. Okay? We know last year the, the the House had a budget. It was a standstill budget with the exception of mandates. $60, $80 million was going to be the increase in the budget. You'd, you'd have, and then you could have took away the sales tax. At worst, you could have brought back a half-cent sales tax. That's not what they want. Why do you think BEAM... Brandon, do me a favor. You, you, you looked this up before. Pull up a uh, uh, legislative task force, a Governor Bell Edwards task force. And let's find out who was on that task force. I think that's the one Alario and, and Jay Darden sent on. But I just want to make sure it would be a, a, a task force, it would be a tax task force, a budget task force, or something like that. Because what happens with task force, folks? They're put together by the legislature or the governor. They handpick the people they want on the task force. You know what that's for, huh? Well, that's for the press to say, here's what the task force recommends. Here's what the experts recommend. Then when the governor or legislature, Democrat, Republican, whatever, 
They can always say, well, we're only doing what the task force said we could, we should do. And they use that as, a, as an excuse because they don't want to take the, make the tough decisions themselves. That's why they point to this task force. Well, I'm only doing what the task force said. Jim Beam recognized the task force in every article he writes. Why? Because he wants to give them credibility. Why don't they have credibility, Griffon? Because the people that put the task force together are the people that want a certain decision, and it comes back like they want, which is basically, y'all need to increase taxes. And that's what they're saying. That's what a task force is for. They want to increase taxes. So, so what happens is the way they increase taxes and they blame it on somebody else. So what is what the task force said? Well, the task force was put together by Bill Edwards, by the legislature. And all I got to do is look at a few names. It hasn't come yet through yet, Bernie, Brandon. But uh, it'll come through. It'll come through for the shows over or, or during the poor course of the program. And if you look at the names on some of the tax, yeah, they're going to have some credible people. Absolutely, they're going to have some credible people, some economists and things of that nature. But the task force is set up so they can say, well, the task force said this, so we're going to do it. And the task force gets blamed for it, and nobody ever knows who's on the task force. And the press can continue to run. Well, this is what the task force has been saying for years. Well, the task force, they have been saying it for years, but who put the task force together? That's, that's always my question. Because I could have told you what, the, and I did. Brandon probably can vouch for this. I said, well, this task force is going to come back and say, raise taxes, raise taxes, raise taxes. And that's what they did. They want to get on income tax. They want you to have less take-home pay. They want you to write off less. They want to tax more businesses. They want to spread the tax even deeper and bigger in the, in the places we hadn't taxed. You know, I'm not asking anybody to tax law services. You know, and CPAs and all that stuff. Us middle-class people that use people like that, and I do. Uh, you're just going to hit us harder and harder and harder. So I'm telling y'all, when you start reading the task force says, uh, and every task force that's put together, budget, spending, tax, they always got some good stuff in there. Absolutely. Always got good stuff in that. You know, Lance just mentioned, Lance Harris, Representative Harris just mentioned, uh, the uh, tax breaks on the, the movie uh, makers and the tax credits, should I say. And he made a good point because I've been hearing about how bad this thing has been since day one. That is, this was done under Jindal, I think, Brandon, not under uh, uh, Blanco. I'm pretty sure it was done under Bobby Jindal. Okay, and that thing was totally different than, than a tax break and a tax cut. That had to do with credits. You can buy them and sell them and, and things of that nature. But apparently that was not a good thing for us. And and so that may have been bad. But if they would have listened to the House Republicans instead of just calling them names in the press, wackos and crazies and all the stuff that they tried to do, and listened to them, it made more sense. See, folks, let me just tell you something. I even wrote this down, Brandon, because I thought it was important. If you have a, if you, listen to, if you have a spending problem, listen to me, if you have a spending problem, a spending problem, we, I, I've been there and done it. If you have a spending problem, you cannot fix it on the revenue side. I want you to listen to me. If you have a spending problem at your house, your problem, you're not going to fix the problem by having a lot more money. You're just going to spend more money. So that's why Baton Rouge would never get fixed. It will never get fixed because we never address the problem. If you have a spending problem, it's not because you don't have enough revenue. It's because you can't, you, you're spending on too many things that you don't need to be spending money on. Try it at home. If you make $100,000 and you spend $110,000, you got a problem. And then if all of a sudden you say, well, now I got $110,000. That's great. But now you're spending 125000 You still have the problem because you've never addressed the real issue. The real issue is I have a spending problem. I'm going to spend everything I bring in. Folks, you got to understand if you have a spending problem, you got to fix it on the spending side. And that's what Lance Harris and, and Cameron Henry, 
Blake Miguez and some of these people that are in the fight, they're talking about the spending side. Well, what does the press do? They come out, well, this task force says, give us your spending cuts. Well, because they don't want to fix the problem. They just want the revenue because they don't want to deal with it. You know, Brandon, if you have a flat tire, I don't care how much, how much coolant you put in your radiator. It doesn't matter. You're not going, the flat tire's not going to get fixed if you don't deal with the issue, folks. Does that make any sense? Well, my air conditioner's not working. I think I'll uh, check my water lines. <laughs> my Lord. Well, my roof's got a hole in it. Well, let me see what's wrong with the bathrooms. That's, that's what Baton Rouge does. You know? I got a problem with my engine light coming on in my car. <laughs> Let me go see what the electricity problem is in my house. That's what they're doing in Baton Rouge. It's a spending problem. They're not dealing with spending, so they're never going to fix it. They're just dealing with the revenue side. And that's why you don't ever hear anything coming out of their mouths about changing anything in state government. I'm right, folks. I'm right. And I'm sticking to my guns because I know I'm right. It just takes time for people to understand. We'll take a break. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. I'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hicks and Hands It Hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. Now, let me give you an example, and I want to thank Brandon for pulling this up for me. All right. Task Force on Structural Changes in Budget and Tax Policy. I have the names. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. I'm going to go down the list, and I'm going to give you the connections. There's 12 people on the list. Now, when I read the names and give you where they work and who they work for and who appointed them, you can see why the task force is a big government task force that appointed big government solutions of more taxes. Now, let me go down the list. Dr. James Richardson, okay, he's on a revenue estimating conference that's got it wrong every time under Bobby Jindal. Now, James Richardson's a smart guy. I'm not Dr. Richardson smart, but he works for government. He works for the state of Louisiana. Kimberly Robinson, Secretary, Louisiana Department of Revenue. She works for government. Uh, William Potter was appointed by the Society of Louisiana Certified Public Accounts. Uh, Thomas Clark, he was appointed by the governor himself. That would be one John Bell Edwards. Jay Darden, Commission of Administration. What did I tell you? Darden's on there. Most if when you think of the liberal, liberal, liberal tax and spend Republican, Jay Darden's name ought to pop up every time. The next one, James Aim. Taylor Barra put him there. Dr. Stephen Sheffron, president of the Senate. John Alario put him there. Jason DeCour, member of the business uh, community appointed by Taylor Barra. Sean Riley, appointed by... John Alario, Robert Travis Scott uh, with PAR, Public Affairs and Research Council. And by the way, love him to death. Think he's a great guy. Covered it like he was supposed to. But when did PAR ever offer solutions that people bought into? And where were they complaining all these years? Barry Irwin. I like Barry. I don't really know him real well. He come from a council of better government. They always pushing for a big tax. Always, always, always. Randy Roach, put that by Taylor Barra. Randy Roach, I think he's former, he may still be, mayor of Lake Charles. And people wouldn't argue Randy was a tax and spend liberal too. People would call him more of a moderate. I know Randy, I like Randy. Randy's moderate at best, and he used to be a mayor. And then uh, Lewis Rennie, pointed by John Alario. So see, on this committee, working for government, appointed by Alario and Bell Edwards, there's 12 members. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the 12 appointed or works for government. And I'm not counting Randy Roach, who worked for government, you know, for a long time. I like Randy. Randy's a smart guy. But Randy's part, and Byron, I put him there. But my point being, and John, and let me tell you something. Jay Darden is sitting at them meetings and telling people what to say and do. So 
we're going to keep going back to this task force. And the task force, when it came out, when we read these names earlier, I told y'all what they would do. They're going to raise taxes. They're raising taxes. And that's all this task force is. It's a joke, and it's something for the press to keep going back to. Let's go to Justin in Monroe. Justin, how you doing? I'm well, sir. Uh, good morning. I tell you, uh, when you're talking about uh, this, the spending problems and everything else, it's to me, it's not really a problem. It's the fact that uh, they don't they don't want to help uh, because you know there's plenty of places where we can make cuts. Uh, the problem is that they they don't you liberals don't want to lose uh, lose face. They've got lots of guys and everybody else whose toes they would stomp on. Uh, I work in the grocery industry, and um, I see the amount of uh, money that's being given to people who have no uh, willingness to go and get jobs. Louisiana is kind of like parents who've got three grown kids in the basement who have no, no... you know, no willingness to go get a job, and they just sit there and support them. Uh, you got people with five, six kids and everything else, and all they do is just get a check and, and just sit around. Um, we got a lot of states in the, in the U.S. right now who are actually cutting down and, and making it uh, more difficult for people to get on government assistance, which I understand there's about 10 to 15 percent, if, if, if I'm uh, looking at that correctly, who actually need it. Everybody else are perfectly healthy individuals, yep. and um, and and it just it, 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 it's ridiculous. That's one of the big ways that we can stamp down uh, on on the, on the money that we're giving away, not necessarily spending, but giving away, and uh, and that to me would put a huge uh, help as far as the bottom line. Yeah, well, I think to go along with what you said, we spent five point two billion dollars more since the twenty sixteen budget. $5.2 billion. Well, some of that's matching money. By the way, when somebody tells you that we spend more money from federal government, from state government, that's a lie. That's been in Jim Beam columns and his other people's column for a long time. Telling you, when you look at who's on this budget committee, okay, and I read this, and we did this, Brandon, when it first came out. I said, they're going to come back and raise taxes, and, they, and that's what they're doing. And I don't, I'm not saying any of these people are not reputable people. They may be, but I'm telling you, when you got, they work for government, they've been appointed by the governor, they've been appointed by John O'Leary, or three appointed by O'Leary, or you got Darden, and you got another governor appointee, appointee, that's five, and then you got three of them that work for government all their lives. I mean, what do you expect them to come back? They're coming back where we need more money. None of the structural changes changes government. It only changes tax policy that you and me are going to pay more taxes, and that's frustrating to me. Anyway, thanks for the call. Appreciate exactly. the comment. Appreciate the comment. I'm just I'm reading this out of their own handbook, folks. Let's go to let's see what we got. Uh, Jay on the road. Jay, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good. You're doing a pretty good job of explaining stacking the deck. Well, stacking the deck is what they did, but I so, called this when they put the people on the task force saying, well, "How are you going to believe this task force when it's a pro big government? Let's keep spending." bunch of people on here. Most of them are pro-big government. Oh, I agree with you totally. Uh, but what I called about is if you look at the expose book about Mr. Trump, that's kind of like stacking the deck, too, if you think about it, because all the sources are unnamed. Oh, it's, oh the, the guy, Michael, <laughs> Wolf, the book will be a joke. It won't move one person off of Trump. Matter of fact, Bannon's already reversed think- everything, so it's it's. Uh, I, I wouldn't even worry about the book. I really wouldn't. They, they, they anything they write about Trump, well, it's going to be hate. Yeah, well, the thing that gets me, it's like saying, "When's the last time you beat your wife?" Yeah. How do you prove you didn't? Well, right, that's a good point. Well, anyway, it's right. just totally unfair. But well, hey, listen, the press that's is never right. the press is never going to be fair. Just like. The press is not fair when it comes to Bell Edwards. They're not going to be. They're never going to be fair. They think he won that election. He did. If you look at the votes, he won the election. But the problem they got is they won't talk about how he won it. And they try to create a political scene where they can say, look how he's changed what government's done. And he's not. He's making it worse. So anyway, we'll we'll see what happens. Got to go. Appreciate the call. 844-766-6607. Hicks and that's a But once again, when they quote this, 
task force. Beams quoted the task force three or four times. I saw it this uh, last week in other advocate articles, in Times Picayune articles, and AP stories, quoting the task force that was put together, put together by the left. Joy in Monroe. How are you doing, Joy? Pretty good. How are you today, Lane? Doing fine, sir. Excellent. I was going to touch on the welfare issue a little bit, but, you know, we, we talk about the food stamps issue, and I, I'm not saying that it's not an issue, but I believe that it's a drop in the bucket compared to the corporate welfare that we're handing out today. Um, specifically, I look at Foster Farms that's getting hundreds of millions of dollars a year in tax well, benefits for working prison labor. I don't, I don't, I know, mean, I don't, know. right there, that's a drop. Yeah, I, and by I the mean, way, I don't. More... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just. I was agreeing with you that uh, I never did agree with doing what they did with that, but they are working a lot of prisoners, no doubt about it, and uh, which helps and the bottom helps there. the bottom line. Not just there. Oh, I don't think it's but, just and, there at all. And I'm not just talking about the corporate welfare for the businesses that benefit from the prison labor, but the saints getting hundreds of millions of dollars a year in tax benefits. When they're a billion dollar industry, and by that the makes way, absolutely no sense. Joey, I agree with None. you. I agree a hundred percent with you. And they come back and they take more money out of our pockets, the average working guy like you and me. And it's just frustrating. I know. I see it every day too. No doubt about it. Anyway, got to run. Appreciate the call, your calls, and all that. Welcome in the second hour of the program. Anyway, uh, not much more on the task force, but showing you how bad this is. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Hi, y'all all. Welcome back. Microphone show. Happy New Year. As we rock and roll, first full week anyway. There'll be some people off next week, Brandon, because of Martin Luther King. So some people get four-day work week again next week. So mm. They go from being off to to being off again. And then before you know it, you got the week of February that has Mardi Gras in it. People are going to be off there as well. Had somebody just call me and said, would you tell your weatherman to look outside? It's beautiful outside. It keeps saying rain. <laughs> apparently well, you must be talking about another station because it's a partly cloudy on <laughs> she said look oh, outside about the weather man look out, but look behind you i see some clouds over yeah so anyway i know i could tell this woman something but she might get mad at me she knows my wife uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't want that uh going back yeah. so i'm gonna be nice 844-766-6607 hicks and the hotline yeah uh i, I just want to reiterate this again that the task force that people in Baton Rouge and, 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 and New Orleans papers are reading, the task force they keep talking about and that the governor keeps talking about. I, let, me, let me find it real quick. Pass it, uh, Jim Beam today. Actually, it was yesterday. Uh, you know, talking about the governor won't call a special session if Republicans don't come forward. Some, by the way, he's meeting with Taylor Barra today. Uh, you know, and he mentions once again several times in here about the task force. And the task force he's talking about is made up of pro John Alario and pro Edwards people and pro government people. The suggestion that was made that Harris called a good starting point comes from a task force created by the legislature, does away with the extra penny, makes permanent reduction in tax credits, deductions, and rebates. Uh, approved in 2015, removes the more than 180 exemptions from the remaining four cent sales taxes and reduces to 50% the uh, excise federal itemized deductions allowed on state income tax forms. They also recommend other tax changes, but Republicans have never been in favor of tamping with income taxes. Well, if if the Republicans go with this task force, then they're going against every principle they ever ran on. I'm just telling you, when you you got to look at who the task force is made up of. Jay Darden, I told you, man, they're listening to that guy. They Everybody on this task force thinks that guy's an expert, an expert on finances. And all he ever wanted to do was raise taxes, and he did with Steli. Three people put on there by uh, John Alario. That's four. One by the governor. That's five. And then you got three people that work for state government. That's eight. 
poor member in a, in a, in a council of better Louisiana. When did they ever accomplish anything, either one of those groups? And I don't care if you get mad at me because you're a member of those groups. What do you ever accomplish? Tell me. Show me over 70 years what they accomplished. Randy Roach. I like Randy. Randy's moderate at best. He's a solid, solid Democrat. So who's on his, who's on his committees? I mean, you might have two or three people on this committee at all that would be against this. I mean, going into the committee before they ever met, the most you could get is two or three people to vote against what they were going to come out with. And this stuff is rehashed. We've been hearing this for many, many years. So I'm just warning you, uh, just because a task force is put together, okay, just because a task force is put together, it doesn't mean that this is some a bunch of experts. And that's what they want you to think. J- J- uh, Dr. Richardson's a smart guy, no doubt about it. He works, I think, for LSU. Uh, he's been on an estimating conference for a long time. How many years did they get that wrong? A lot, a lot of years. Now, he's an expert on there. Once again, somebody going to call Richardson. Man, running you down, throwing you under the bus. It's not what I'm doing. I'm just giving all your credentials, not some of them. And it doesn't make you an expert because you give. Matter, matter of fact, if you look at the revenue estimating conference, those guys have been wrong for so long, they discredit themselves. I didn't discredit Richardson. He's on the committee. He's one of the top dogs. I just know when I see these articles and they keep they keep telling us how bad these Republicans are, the ones that are tough. I'm not talking about the Barry Iowes and the Julie Stokes and, and all these people that are leftists that have a Republican name. I'm talking about the real Republicans have stood their ground in the House. And then far as the Senate, I can't help the Senate. The Senate Republicans ought to have enough guts to stand up, but they can't because they got a name by a man by the name of John Alario who can. <laughs> here come Barrow Peacock. Here come Mike Walsworth. I mean, that's what you have in the Senate. There's only very few tough Republicans in there, and they're going to give in to the leftist Alario. And the leftist Alario wants the same agenda as John Bell Edwards. To his credit, he wanted the same agenda Bobby Jindal gave us. He helped give us Bobby Jindal's agenda, and the same people writing how bad the Republicans are won't go against Ed, uh, uh, John Alario, who, by the way, is the biggest power player in the whole deal. Remember, he's the expert. He's the grown-up in the room. He's the magician. He's the Michael Jordan on the, uh, the legislature. Yet everything's gone south, and he's been right there, a gigantic part of it. Nobody challenges him. Nobody even tries to challenge him. By the way, Brandon, I had it, and I can't find it. I'm disappointed. There was a letter that uh, Bell Edwards sent out to the legislature. And for some reason, I let that slip through my hands. And it, 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 they say it's really, really good. I have not seen it yet. And I had a copy of it and didn't get a chance to read it. And through the weekend, I misplaced it. Uh. I know Chad Rogers had it on the dead Pelican, and it, it, it's something with the headline, the letter that nobody wants, Bell Edwards don't want anybody to see. But once again, I, I misplaced it, and I wish I could find it. If I could find that sucker, I would share it with you, because, I mean, it, it, it is something that needs to be shared. I, I, I read enough and knew I wanted to do it this week, and I misplaced it, and I apologize for that, because I need to try and find that letter. Maybe somebody can send it to me. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Don't forget to check us out, Moon Graffon, on Facebook. And uh, you can always email me, moon at moongraffon.com. Let's go to Mike. Uh, I think Mike's on the road. Mike, how you doing? Doing well, Moon. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I remember Senator Kennedy, John Kennedy, saying, uh, I think those contracts are called NGOs. No, 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 no. The the contracts aren't called. NGOs is a separate thing from the contracts. Kennedy says we cut the contracts, we'd save about seven hundred million a year. Uh, NGOs would. Jay Darden was was supposed to. Jay Darden was supposed to have uh, done a lot of research and shown all these cuts he was going to make on that. Where is he on that? Well, to be honest with you, he promised two years ago. Two years ago, he. 
uh, D. Richard, and, and I ain't talked to D in a while, but D can tell us. Uh, Representative D. Richard, the rep- uh, independent, he promised D. Richard that he would come back and talk about uh, those contracts and what they can cut. He's going to examine them all. That was two years ago. He's not said one stinking word on those contracts. Not one. Not one. Now, it been, but Dodd's yeah, not going to. Dodd's a big government liberal. He always has been. Hypocrite with a capital H. Yeah, well, that's 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 Jay Darden. And he's, people in Baton Rouge love him because they don't understand him. They don't look at his voting record. That's just a fact. And uh, Darden has been a problem. But Darden promised this wasn't me. This wasn't you. He went to D. Richard, and I wish Representative Richard was listening right now. He went to Richard and said, "Look, pull your bill. We're gonna look at every one of them." That was two years ago. He promised to have an answer by the end of the session. And that hadn't happened either. Now we're two years, and we're getting ready to come up on our third session. So that's it, brother. Good point. Appreciate the call. Uh, Because I forgot about that. Jay Darden did promise to do that. And nothing was ever done. But it doesn't have to be done because the advocate's never going to ask him where is that. The Gannett paper's never going to ask him where it is. The TV stations are never going to ask him. He's never going to come on here and let me ask him. So uh, the NGOs are non-government organizations that's make, getting money. Purple Circle Social Club and things like that. That's the little projects they get. What they did was they rebrand all that stuff. So me and you can't find out what they're doing. That's what happens. That's all been rebranded. Non-government organizations are still getting money from the state of Louisiana. I'll give you another example. I had a guy call in earlier, said the New Orleans Saints. I like the Saints pulling for the Saints. I said non-governmental organization getting millions. There's golf courses that are not. Francis Thompson formed Poverty Point, Poverty Point Golf Course and the lake and all that. That should be a non-government organization, but he made it a state park, so that becomes a government organization we got to fund every year. That thing's losing so much money, it's not even funny. Anybody want to challenge that? We've got to take a break. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. You're listening to the Moon Graffon. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Folks, gear up. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff happening at the federal level. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about on that. But the, the state stuff is going to be big. Uh, as Bell Edwards and Jay Darn, the one-term governorship, uh, is is really, really gearing up. And you're going to start hearing the same. I'm already hearing it. Uh, they got to cut universities and they got to cut health care. And, and all the same old stuff. It never changes. Never changes. Anyway, uh, they finally, we talked about this with Lance Harris about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Federal tax rewrite could be a gift for state lawmakers struggling with budget chart follows. We talked about with Lance. Elizabeth Crisp uh, actually did a story on it. And I- I'm glad somebody's putting the information out there. You know, Edwards even says, obviously, this could help us resolve a portion of the cliff. Well, this is every year, too. And I don't know if Jim Bean will write about that. He's too busy writing, beating up uh, other st- of, of Republicans in the House. I mean, it's just totally criticize and beat them up and support a bell Edwards, no matter what tax he wants to increase. And that's why I think it's important that you know what these who these committees are made up of. You know? I mean, two or three might vote against what they did. Everybody else, before they ever walked in there, they are let me, let me just be honest with you. I've been taught by the best. C B. Most of the times on these committees that they put together, before they ever walk in, they got the votes and they got the plan they want. <clears throat> don't be fooled by all these committees. I'm not saying all committees are that way. But I bet you people could call this program. I ought to call Lyle Miller. Lyle Miller got on a committee one time uh, when Mike Foster was in office. God dang it. Randy, you know what? I'm going to give you his number. We're going to call him at the break. Remind me. Lyle got on one of the committees, and they went down there, and they met one time or maybe twice. And he said, man, they already know what they're going to do. Whoever ran the committees directed everything they voted on and voted for. 
I'm not sold on committees. We've had 4,000 committees since I've been living in Louisiana to fix roads, fix this and fix that. And all the situation, all they ever come back with is we got to raise more money, raise more money, raise more money. That's it. So when a committee pops up, the goal is going to be to raise money. Uh, increase taxes, let's call it what it is. Uh, but not only Mr. Miller, but a lot of other people that sit on these committees, most of these committees come back and go, well, so-and-so ran it. They kind of did what they wanted to do. There was not a whole lot of discussion. Matter of fact, on one committee, I had another guy tell me, they said, well, submit your uh, what you want to do in writing. Bef- now, listen to this, Brandon. Me and you go into a committee meeting, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's say we're on the same committee. Right. And it'd probably be the doo-doo bird committee, but whatever it would be. Oh, man. Okay, so somebody's running the committee, and we go, oh, man, great. I, I can't wait. And you write off. And then they say, well, submit what you want to talk about and your ideas to the committee before the meeting. So you get there, and you find out, well, everything I submitted, they're not even talking about. Well, what about this? And you don't have much time to talk. Mm-hmm. They, they got their ideas already. And, Brandon, you're, you wasted your time Writing it down. Now, you may say a few words while you're there, yeah. and they look at you like you're stupid. <laughs> they would go, Brandon and Moon, what the heck? They, thought they really want to fix something. That's not what we're here for. This, committee's, this committee, and this is one of them, is put there for a reason, and the reason that committee's put together is for politicians to have cover with the help of the press for what they really want to do. This is no more than Steli, too. They think that really worked, and it didn't work. Because we have a spending problem, and let me say it again, and it's important that you hear this. If you have a spending problem, you can't fix it with more revenue. You can't do it at your house. You can't do it in your marriage. You can't do it in your business. You can't do it in government. you got to deal with the problem that's a problem, and the problem is spending. And we have more pri- We have too many employees. Nobody wants to deal with the stuff that I'm talking about. Nobody. And, and and so if you don't want to deal with the problem, what you do is you put together a committee that finds a way to get more revenue. Look at all the things that the committee wants to do. Raise, 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 raise taxes. The committee never says, here's what we need to cut, here's what we need to watch, here's what we need to study. When Jay Darden goes to D. Richard and says, hey, pull your bill, I'm going to go through all these contracts that John Kennedy talked about. And we're going to find out which ones we can cut. And, and Kennedy never said cut a contract. He said cut 10% across the board. $7.8 billion worth of contracts a year. And we can cut some of that money. If you cut 10%, you save the state $780 million. There it is. There's, there's your budget fix. Trump's sending money back, seven hundred eighty. dollars Now we got to, still got a surplus. But that's not what they want to deal with. They want... They want more and more and more and more. These committees, I'm telling y'all, folks, when they form committees, I laugh. I can almost tell you, and I wouldn't miss many. I don't care if it's a local committee or a state committee. If they put together a committee, if they put together a committee, I will promise you the committee is to benefit wherever it's coming from to benefit that that particular uh, government, whether it's local, state, or national. That's what it's there for. By the way, the big push last night, and what they've been put, Oprah Winfrey for president. Which, and the reason they think Oprah could win, she would get all the black vote, and she would really stock up on women votes. Because women, not all women, let me back up. There'd be a lot of women vote on a motion to have the first then you have a black woman president. Forget the qualifications. Her advice will come 100% from Barack Obama. I can promise you. But that's what the goal is now. Oprah for president. By the way, I hadn't watched one Oprah show in my whole life, Brandon. I'm just being, I try to watch that. That's... Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Uh, before I get back to Oprah. President, I'm telling you, Brandon, the key is we got all of them. We secured a minority vote. Hey, not, not, nothing's going to be fixed in the housing department. Nothing's going to be fixed in the cities. Maybe you get two free cell phones and go get women vote and play on an emotional uh, roller coaster of Oprah who will use Michelle and Ro- Barack Obama as the barometers of what they need to do. She'll be more liberal than any of them. Then before I get to that, 
I want to go back to the task force, Brandon. Just talk to a friend of mine. And I gave you these names of these people. Nobody on this list from manufacturing. Nobody on this from retail. Nobody on this from small business. Nobody. Nobody. You know, if you're going to talk about tux, who's a, nobody to represent the little people like you and me, Brian? They didn't come grab some small person and go, you know, I consider a small brand. We're not, we're not the big dogs. Nobody to go come down through Lafayette and Lake Charles and Alexandria and Monroe and Shreveport and Baton Rouge and Natchitoches and Slidell. Nobody went through and said, Hey, uh, we need some small business people on this. Nobody. All these people are tied. And so, uh, as it was confirmed to me again, they put these groups together. So this is the cover they have when the press calls them experts. This ought to bother us, folks. That's why. And by the way, it was also confirmed that a lot of, a lot of task force and a lot of these groups that are put together, uh, it's already decided what they're going to do in those deals before it's done. Brandon, give you an example. One of the persons I talked to was on the economic development guru with Bobby for Bobby Jindal. And they had to make their recommendations. They had a couple of meetings. They shut it down. <coughs> and they went with what Bobby wanted to do. But the people running the meeting, Bobby Jindal people. Just like the people running this meeting, Jay Darden, leftist Democrat Bill Edwards' this meeting. So let them go ahead. Now, now what they're going to do is say, well, Moon, you discrediting all these good people. Nope. I'm discrediting the committee. And I'm discrediting the people who put them there because they have an agenda. They know what they want. They need the committee to come out and say, we need higher taxes. People don't pay enough taxes in this state. Task force on structural changes in budget and tax policy. I wanted to share this with you. I think it could. Uh, yeah. The big, they, they've been trying to, trying to talk Oprah to run since Trump, Trump came from Hollywood. Trump came from a business background. Trump wasn't going to win. They beat him to death. So they think Oprah is the next best coming. Uh, they'll have a female and a black female at that and somebody everybody adores. Forget her policies, Obama-style policies. But how many women, you may be listening to this program, will vote for Oprah? How many women will turn around and vote for Oprah? Brother, Trump runs or not. Oprah Winfrey to lead the charge of America. Because they're grabbing somebody that's very popular. I'm not saying she's running. She's never claimed she was running. But I'm just telling you, the whole pinup of Oprah running, I just there's, there's something to that or someone like that that they can just win because Oprah wouldn't have a clue. It would be like Rosie O'Donnell running and winning. Don't really have a clue, but we'll let the Obama administration fill in the gaps and take care of everything. And the inner cities will be just as poor, just as uneducated, just as drug ridden, just as dope ridden. Just the number of killings will continue to go up. Oprah's not going to change any of that because no Democrat ever changes that. So when I looked at this and I saw that, I kind of just got the giggles. I said, really? The United States of America would vote like that, and I thought, yeah, they would. You got to, you got to frame the, uh, you got to frame the election. You know, do you see Oprah tough on crime? Do you think, do you think Oprah's going to be tough on anything? You think she's going to be tough on uh, uh, illegals coming across the border? Oprah Winfrey. Now, look for you people that have watched the program. I'm not one of them. And I know she's popular. And I know women love her. White, black, green, and yellow. They love her. So if you can if you can get that twelve percent of the population, you'd have that in in their hands. And then you can turn around and get a heavy, heavy woman vote. If you got a heavy, heavy woman vote, then that may be a winner for her. Of course she'd be reaching out to the to the illegals and things of that nature as well. But I do see, I do see that as being someone they would probably put out. By the way, one other thing. The gas tax debate has not gone anywhere. 
the gas tax debate is coming back. I want you all to understand that it's coming back. Folks, I'm all for fixing our roads. I tell you, I'm sick of driving on bad roads. The problem with the gas tax debate is they won't tell us what they did with the money, all the money we gave them to fix roads. Number two, I believe if they if they do have a road tax that passes, I believe a percentage of it will be kicked back for pay raises and things of that nature. And to shore up the retirement system, which means we're not going to have 90, 100%, 80%, whatever it is, to fix the roads. That's a problem. You know, we, Brandon, I think the constitutional amendment, and maybe you know, maybe you don't know, that said every penny had to go to roads from now on. Didn't that fail? I almost think, I think that failed, Brandon. I think because people didn't buy into it that they would put money on the roads because I said if they passed that, that would be a sign that they can vote for a new road tax. Yeah, it definitely failed. Yeah, so you had a road tax, money that was going to go 100% to roads for now on. Now, Brandon, they weren't going to take any money that they already had. It was just going to be one of those deals. For now on, we got a road tax, and we're going to make sure we put all that on the roads. What about the money that you're not spending on roads? So they weren't going to take any of that money and spend that on roads. It was just going to be all new money coming in. And... And I'm telling you, folks, I, I'm driving these roads, and they're bad. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose now, but they are bad. And my question is, how much? How many of you willing to pay a road tax? Because I still think one's coming. We're going to have a special session. Bill Edwards says we're not going to have a special session. We're going to have a special session. And a special session, they're going to throw the road tax in there. Remember, they can't. Next year, during the election year, is a year they can vote taxes up and down. Not this year. Next year. So to do anything with taxes, they have to have a special session. As you know, the one cent sales tax is coming off the books on July 1st this year. Which, by the way, it ought to come off. You realize we got, we're got we number one in sales tax. If they cut it to half a cent, guess what we fall to? To number one. We still stay number one. If we get rid of the one cent sales tax... I saw the numbers. I think we we fifth highest sales tax in the country. Fifth. We're fifth highest sales tax in the country, even if we get rid of it. If you drop it a half cent, I think we're still number one. But but I still believe that that's a big push. I just want to know where the money went. The money we put up for roads, where did it go? And I think if they cannot answer that, then you don't give them any more money. you got to be able to tell us what you're doing with the money that we have now. But I don't know how much more our roads can take it. I'd be real blunt with you. I'm not advocating a sale. I'm not, I don't think we ought to raise them. I think we ought to force them into, into fixing roads with the money we have. And, boy, we got a lot of money. All right, quick break. Your calls when we get back, 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. We'll be right back. Last year, uh, and I know he's a nice guy and everybody likes him, he speaks well. Sean Wilson uh, called the legislature in the House toxic. You must appreciate the toxic mix that is in the House of Representatives as it exists today and the total lack of leadership in the House. By the way, that was that was not him. That was, uh, I'm sorry, hold up. That was Ken Nakan, Chief Executive Officer officer of the Louisiana State Association of General Contractors. By the way, Brandon, they had some general contractors getting mad at hell as me because I was against the sales tax. I mean, one of them even called an advertiser. Of course, they laughed at him. Uh, some made him sound ignorant, but uh, called an advertiser because they were mad at me because I was against it. Nakan said that uh, there are really three speakers of the House, Taylor Barra, Cameron Henry, and Lance Harris. 
the power in the House is Representative Harris. The Republicans do not allow Governor Edwards any victory, and the passage of infrastructure bill would be considered the victory. Once again, Narcan is looking. Let me tell you something. Narcan is a great example of if y'all would pass this, I would have a job and we, we can get we can make a lot of money. He's not Narcan is not wanting this for roads. Narcan is wanting this for money. I want you to have money for roads, Mr. Narcan. I want everybody to be able to go build a roads. So what we do is they didn't spend the money properly the first time, so we give them some more. You wouldn't do that with your kid. You, you wouldn't do that with your kid. You give your kid a hundred dollars with a grocery lift, and he comes back with no money. He's only done. He's only got three items on a list. You give him another hundred dollars, Mister Nakay? No, you wouldn't. We got road problem. I'm gonna be the first one to admit it. I hate driving on substandard, horrible roads. But calling the leadership in the house toxic when you won't help them fight the budget. If we can fight the budget and fight the spending that's going on, maybe we can come up with a half a billion dollars a year on new roads. But you won't help us fight us on that. You think everybody can go out there and pay money? Who are you bailing the roads for? We got out migration going on again. We're losing people again. Shouldn't they give tax break to radio talk show hosts who tell the truth? Well, I'd get a big tax break. But I'm not in there fighting for that. I know you need the money. I know I want the construction people to make a living. I do. But why don't you help fight against some of the bad? Why don't you? Where's Nakan and the people that want to build roads when we start talking about spending money for NGOs in the billions of dollars? Where's Nakan when we want to make sure that we cut uh, these contracts 10 percent and save us seven hundred and fifty million dollars? We can put all that on roads. You know where to be found. Where's well, Nakan when we shut the NGOs down? There's nowhere. You start about raising taxes, raising money, starts talking about how bad these people are. Well, where are y'all when we need y'all to stop the crazy spending going down in Baton Rouge? They've taken that money, they maybe they've put it in pensions to cover their butts. The DOTD has not done their job, and you want us to give them more money. And you call people toxic who's trying to help the state balance its budget. And you won't help us at lift one finger fighting the other side. Let's go to phone lines. Start off with uh, Terry. I'd laugh here. Terry, how you doing? Good, man. Thanks for having my call. Um, just want to let you know, I, I got real aggravated last week. I went by a, a spare tire for my boat trailer last week. And uh, I had to pay $2.00 for a state <coughs> tax and i asked you know what 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 is this for and she said i don't know but it it you know we we have to collect it we can't take it off yes yeah, it's, it's two dollars it's two dollars i think to dispose of the tires properly yeah but that, that that's the thing i didn't have a tire to dispose of i, I bought it brand new it was a, a tire rim setup you know and i'm like man this is a good deal so i picked it up and I said, is it for, for disposal? Because I'm not disposing any tires. I said, I, I don't know what it's for. So I said, well, let me talk to the manager. Well, give you an example. Let me give you, comes, let, let me give you another example. Go take a battery and go buy you a new battery and tell somebody, they say, where's your used battery? And you say, well, I got it at the house. They're going to tell you they're going to charge you 2 or $5 more. If you bring it in, they'll give you your money back because they want to dispose of them properly. So they charge you for not bringing in your, your battery. If she'd have told me, you know, it's a it's a state tax for roads, I'd have been all for it because God knows we need we need road improvements in Louisiana. But to not be able to explain just saying it's a state it's a state fee, a state tax, it drove me up the wall. I'm like, you know, we're we're taxed to death as it is, and now you can't even tell me what it's for. Yeah. You know? But anyway, thanks for listening. Yes, yeah, taxes and fees and uh, people don't understand they feed us and taxes to death. And uh, they keep John Bell Evans is pulling out a deal saying we the least tax. And that's not true. You can grab me. I can grab. I can grab one right now to show you that we pay. We spend more money per person in this state by far in the South with tax dollars. But by far, it's not even close. It's, it's, it's literally not even close. 
But Bill Edwards is bringing out, hey, we don't pay enough taxes. But we don't make enough money either. Joy in Abbeville. How you doing, Joy? Hey, good morning, Moon. Uh, sun was out this morning, thank God. It's not freezing. That's another good reason to thank God. <laughs> well, you're not lying. Because cold, it wasn't cold. It was, it was, like you said, it was freezing. When you see 11 degree with the wind chill in South Louisiana, no telling what it was in Monroe and Shreveport, that's cold, brother. I pay good money. I want my heat and mosquitoes back. Thank you very uh, much. Bring all the global warming we can handle. Amen, brother. Hey, I made a little trip this weekend to College Station, Texas. I stayed off of I-10. Anybody that lives south of I-10, we getting screwed over. Our roads south of I-10 are horrendous. When you cross I-10 and get on 190 heading east and west... <laughs> The roads, when you cross I-10 in Crowley, there's a shoulder on the side of the road. When you cross I-10 in Jennings, there's shoulders on the side of the road. It, it just, I'm, I'm starting to see a pattern here. We're, we're being taken advantage of. And most of the population, if you think about it, lives south of I-10 in Lafayette and Lake Charles. And on, uh, 70% is, is below I-10, 50%. We're, paying, is we're New Orleans. paying the money out of the gozo, but we get the poorest damn roads in the state. Yep. There's something wrong. By the way, we, I, we pay the same 20 cents that Texas pays. Yep. Somebody, somebody's putting in the roads north of I-10 because they're beautiful. I stayed off of I-10 all the way from College Station all the way back home and there. And I don't know what's going on, but somebody somewhere has got their hand in the cookie jar. Well, but the answer is if you'll pay more, we can fix them. All you uh, got to nope. do is want to pay. You'll pay 30 cents while Texas is paying 20. I'll bet you right now Texas is still have better roads than us. Yep. Mississippi's yep. Uh, paying I think eight, it's a, Mississippi's paying less than 19 cents. I think it's a management issue. It has always been a management issue. That's what makes me mad. And that's why yep. I get mad at Mr. Nockham. Mr. Nockham is going to come out and blast legislators for being so bad and uh, because he wants the money. He knows he's that close to making a bunch of money. This graft and corruption, I think, is what's eating us up. All right, man. Got to run. Appreciate the call. Uh, last one. Cornelius, what's up? Hey, Moon and that big Brad brand to handle them big Saints won yesterday, yep. so maybe they'll win next week, too. I just wanted to tell you, Moon, I done stepped in the city marshal's race at Alexandria, so I'm running. <laughs> oh, you're running? For city marshal. <laughs> you're running for city marshal? Of Alexandria now. <laughs> have you Have you really qualified? Oh, yeah. Well, when's uh, when's I the made, election? I signed up on my birthday Friday. was January 5th. I'm 57. <laughs> wow, I'm right behind you. you the, yeah, the difference between I'm me and you is I ain't never thought about that. You actually done it. <laughs> yeah. But God bless you. And we'll see who wins between Georgia and Alabama. Oh, it's going to be a good one. I can go either way. I just want to watch it and enjoy it. So we'll see what happens. All right, got to run. Thanks, Cornelius. Be interesting tonight, though, Brandon, because that's – it's, it's two SEC games, and it's yeah. funny. It's back in Atlanta. Yeah. Well, Which, you brought up a good point in the commercial break. Alabama has already gone on the road in the national championship and beat LSU before. Yeah, the Super they can They can do it again to Georgia. Yeah, but I tell you what, Georgia's pretty good. Uh, I, I hope Georgia wins. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just, I, I like to watch it. I'm going to sit back and enjoy it. My heart's not going to be either way. I, just, I really, really just want to watch the game. But I, 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 I'm glad it's two SEC teams. But I'm in the South. By the way, I really like the Saints' chances on getting to the Super Bowl. If Saints win and Atlanta wins, Saints going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's my opinion. All mm -hmm. right. But if the Saints lose, by the way, Brandon, they're not going to the Super Bowl. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Good deduction on my part. Yeah, huh? there you go. All right, folks. God bless. See you tomorrow.